ladies. How's everybody doing tonight? Tonight we are going to go over something that's pretty important to me that has hit home for me in the past and that hopefully you will come away from this live thinking differently about your core and how to use it. And a pretty big basis of what I talk about a lot in my PT clinic and then also in a lot of my different courses. So what we're going to talk about tonight is the biggest mistake I see whenever people are doing core strengthening. It kind of goes back to the mechanics of it. It also goes back to our body control and what we've been using versus not using and how we have been kind of turning on different things. So the core mistake, ladies, did you all know that I am an environmental engineer then turned PT? Did you all know that? So the way my brain starts thinking is forces, vectors, and how all these things kind of correlate together to form a strong structure so we can then achieve different things either on the bike, in life, and make sure that we are supporting the things that need support and that we are using other things that are meant to be used. So as we think of, let's say a bike frame, as we think of a bike frame, we have the pedals that are meant to rotate around the main lower crank, right? That's what's meant to move. Our frame is meant to then translate that force, translate the load of us into the wheels, and as the cranks move, it moves our rear tire, we propel forward. That, that's all perfect. It moves in certain places and is stable in other places and makes a movement happen for us. Now, what would you say if all of a sudden your frame started to move? You would say that's probably not the right thing to happen. You don't want your frame to start rotating in a place that it doesn't need to be rotating in, right? You want it to be nice and stable and strong there. So then whenever you are propelling that force into the pedals and into your drivetrain, that it's actually gonna work and that your bike's not gonna fall apart. Right? Everybody on board with that? That we want pedals to move, drivetrain to move, back rear tire to move, front, front um, wheel to move as well. Right? Not our frame. Well, as we look at our body, as we're looking at movers and drivers for our bike, for our, for our walking, for other things, we have certain areas that are meant to move more than others. Now, we don't necessarily have a stiff frame. It's the reason why it can turn and rotate, wiggle and move everywhere, okay? So we don't have a stiffness there, but we do need to gain stability in different positions. We need to be able to tighten up, lock in, so then I can move at a different spot and not have here be a movement versus Here now, my hip and my core are my movers, okay? My hip and my back are my movers versus if I stay nice and still, then now my hip is just my mover. And so as we look at how we're put together, as we look at our core, what its main job is, is to stabilize our trunk so then we can move off of it. As we look at how mechanically we're put together, we have our hips that are like a ball and socket joint. Think of like a trailer hitch that comes in and attaches onto that hitch. It's super, super solid, nice, can maintain that movement. You can go over some bumps. It's not going to be disrupted. It's not going to cause any harm. My hip can move under load and it's not going to be hurt through that. It's made to have that movement happen in it underneath load. My spine, as we talk about it, as we look at how it's put together, it's basically like one thing slapped on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. It's not made as, it doesn't have the stability that your ball and socket does. It's not made to have load and to move with it. It's the reason why you're told if you're going to pick up something heavy, don't just fold your back and then pick it up. 
because then you're moving and you're loading your spine through that as your mover instead of picking it up and having your hips be your mover. And so my core then stays nice and still and then therefore protects and stabilizes my back. You're like, okay, Liz, that all makes sense. I don't want my spine to be my big mover, my big shaker, my main power lifter. I want my hips to be my power lifter or my shoulders. I can pull pretty good with my shoulders. I can push pretty good with my shoulders too. So also my core does. It helps stabilize so I can use shoulders. That's super important for everything as well. Everybody makes, does this all make sense to everybody? Has anybody ever thought about their core like this? That it's there as a stabilizer to your spine to make sure you can move other places. To make sure that you can pull from your trunk so those other places can be your movers. And that it's not just me pulling with my back, but me pulling with my shoulder, my shoulder blade. Or that I'm able to use my hips as my rotators, as my movers, and not move a ton through my, through my back. So when it comes to the biggest core mistake, it's that you don't know how to stabilize your spine. You don't know how to keep it still to then put load through your core to challenge your core. Let me say that again. So you don't understand how to actually keep this part still to then move other places. So let me give you an example. So as we're laying on my back, so we do different core exercises. I need to maintain this right here being still, either press down to the floor or slightly off of it, but I need to maintain that, that position. As I reach my leg out and back, I'm moving now from my hip and my back is staying still. My trunk is staying still. I'm not, and I'm not gonna put that much load, I'm not moving and letting my back come up as I'm reaching my leg out. I'm also not just putting hands underneath my butt and doing six inch holds when this is too hard for me. When I can't maintain that position to the floor without my hands. Basically, if you put your hands underneath your butt like this, you're basically doing what your core was supposed to be doing. And so no matter what position you hold your trunk in, whether it's in more of a neutral spine position, like a deadlift. So I have a slight, I have a slight curve in it as I go down and back up, or that I'm in more of a tucked position here where I'm doing that more on the ground. So I have a base to push against. Either way, it's that my core, my trunk, this goes front and back, that it's being used to keep my spine still, to keep my trunk still, if I'm wanting to move other places. I'm like, well Liz, what about curl ups? What about whenever I pull down against a band? It's a little bit different whenever we're loading front side to do curl downs, curl ups, okay? That's whenever we're moving intentionally here, stacking our spine, engaging through here, and we're moving here without loading more so our back. When we load our back in this position, I don't want to do this movement. That loads this here specifically. When we're loading the front side, it's okay to do cool downs and curls, but those are intentional exercises through this part of your core. As we look at our, all the rest of our exercises, we wanna be able to maintain that stillness here. Does anybody have trouble maintaining that stillness there? I know I used to. I used to have a ton of problems with this. I didn't know how to actually activate my core. I didn't know how to stabilize it. I didn't know how to to move at my hips and not at my back. I didn't mentally understand that. 
And so when it comes to learning and figuring out how to get past this first big mistake, it's understanding that there's two different ways that we move, or there's two different ways that we increase our strength within that. That's our light switch. I can point you to my light switch on my wall. That's our light switch, our ability to turn a muscle on or off, and the brightness of our light. And those two kind of walk hand in hand together. As we work on our strength, that's the brightness of our light getting stronger, getting brighter. That's our ability to lift more. That's our ability to shine more light. As we work on our motor control, then we work on our light switch. That's when we work on the ability to turn our, our lights on in different situations and different strength loads. And we work on our ability to integrate those things with different movement patterns. Does this all, is, is this resonating for anybody? Does anybody feel like they need to work on their ability to turn the light switch on and off instead of using more so just your back muscles, instead of using more so just your hip flexors? Because that used to be my problem, both of those. I would use more so my back muscles. I would drive through and I would go to do a deadlift. I would overarch. My ribs would flare. I would forget everything here and then drive through my back. And I would wonder why my back would hurt afterwards. It's because I'm not integrating here to control that. I'm just going to the end range here and moving more so from my back probably, when I used to do them, instead of holding more of that neutral spine and moving more so th from my hips. Now our lats get involved with our deadlifts too. Don't forget them. But that's the main key through here is maintaining that stillness and the ability to understand how to click that on, that's your light switch. How to actually integrate front side with back side in that movement pattern. How to hold that, how to be still there. Same thing for on my back. I didn't know how to press my back to the floor and not use my back, which seems so counterintuitive. Because as I'm rounding my back, or pushing my back down the floor, and moving my pelvis, I hope you guys can see that. So this is back's off the ground, and then I flatten it to the ground. That's the front part coming together. As I'm doing this, my stomach is flattening through here. I'm not tensing up and just using my six-pack muscles. I'm using my obliques through here. Now, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to, how to tilt my pelvis back. I didn't know how to not tent. I was doing everything wrong whenever I had my back issues. And it was evident. I, every, I would bend over and all of a sudden I'd be like, ooh, my back feels super unstable. I don't know what's going on. Now I was extreme. I needed to go to PT to help some of these things. But if you're not an extreme and you don't know these, this is where you start to reflect in. Exercises are tools, y'all. They're tools to help you understand how to move better. Working to just lift stronger, working to just do the biggest and the best exercise is all cool, but it may not be right for you. And so understanding that doing, doing V-ups might not be the best exercise for you. As you can just see for me, it's not the best exercise for me. I did it super sloppy, I was, my form was off, and so I don't need to be trying to do more of those things. I need to be using more of my legs in that and not using my arms. I need to be simplifying the movement and focusing on, the, on what all I'm integrating, what I'm using. If I start to feel my back as I'm doing things, if I start to feel my hip flexors while I'm doing core exercises, is that right? Am I doing it correctly then? Just put it up there. If I'm doing a core specific exercise and I feel my back tightening up in a bad way, I feel my hip flexors getting really, really tired or my quads getting tired, is that correct? Is this correct? Y'all, like this is part of our problem. We as women, we don't train correctly. Men, do, men don't train correctly either, but we need to because we're wider in our hips. 
You know, we need our core to work for us. So how do you know then if you're doing something that's incorrect is that you feel these things. Stepping back from those exercises, doing an easier exercise, one that's at your level, one that actually makes your core work is what's going to help you get better. If you keep perpetuating, if you keep working on those, on those exercises that make your back kick in, that make your hip flexors kick in, you will not get better. You will not get stronger. You will continue to strengthen your compensation pattern, make your hips tighter, make your back tighter, and not be able to integrate your glutes, not going to be able to support your, support your knees as well. You're going to use mostly quads then. Being able to maintain this position, our downhill riding position, to go up and down, forward and back, this requires that neutral spine deadlift support. If I don't, then I'll end up sagging, driving everything through my back, hip flexors pulling, and my core is just flapping in the wind. Working on the strength, working on that endurance, that's what you need to be focusing in when you think about your core exercises. It's not just doing another crunch. Think about the reason why you're doing what you're doing. I actually hate crunches. I don't think they're very, they're very applicable. There's so many better exercises that you can do besides just a crunch. Doing a full curl up is so much better than doing a just doing a crunch because you get your lower abs involved when you do your curl up. Making sure that you are, if you're gonna do mountain climbers, that you're moving through your hips and that your core is staying nice and still. That you're not just trying to get up and doing a curl each time. Focus in on those, on those, on that hip movement so you can work on this core strength as you're doing that movement. If you're doing other plank variations, focusing in on here being your stable, your stability, your stabilizers, so your back stays still, your trunk stays still, and then your hips do more movement. These are the things that I see commonly that are, that are done wrong, that cause us to have back issues, that cause us to not get better from back issues. A lot of times when we have back issues, it's because we've strained certain things. But stress added to that strain always makes things worse. Support added to a strain makes things better. Listening to your body and what it what it's working, what it's using is the biggest key for you to feeling better. That's the biggest thing. If you can take away anything from this, as you're doing your core exercises, think, is this helpful? Is this useful? Or am I just reinforcing my bad habits? That's, if I could, change anything about your workouts. That's what I would make sure to do. Ask yourself in the middle of them, what are you doing? What are you working? How does it feel? Just those questions will lead you down the path of doing things so much better. Shay says, give a reminder for the form. And a lot of times, um, Rachel, lacking core strength equals lacking butt strength. They, they go hand in hand together. We're patterned either using our, our core and our butt or our back and our hip flexors more so. Now, everything needs to work together. It's not that I don't need you to ever use your hip flexors. It's not that I don't ever need you to use your back. That's part of it. But I don't need to be driven from your back for it. Um, Michelle says, beyond speed, it's interesting how men versus women bike. Gotta be physiology. So many women complain versus men. In mountain biking, I wonder if we strain because we are right who we are riding with. Something you something you said made me think of this. I am a healthy rider riding alone or with women. I think it just depends. I push myself a lot. Um, I ride with a lot of guys too, uh, but I wouldn't say that I necessarily push myself to keep up with them. I ride my ride. I I'm out there to have fun, and 
It's not that I need to keep up with anybody. Yes, I feel better when I am getting faster, when I'm getting stronger. I can usually have more fun. I can try more different things. Um, I'd say that women have more issues because we're a little bit wider. We don't gain strength as quickly and we need strength more so. But most of us women would rather stretch all the time or do yoga all the time instead of actually doing strength exercises. And strength exercises, is what's, that's what's gonna make you feel the best. That's what's gonna make you feel good. It's not that you don't need yoga, it's not that you don't need stretching, you do. But you need strength with stretching, not just stretching. That's the key part, and most of the time, we would just rather stretch. We feel good about it, we're usually better at it, we usually are more flexible. But the more flexible you are, you know what? The more core strength that you need, the more support you need. And it's also harder to get it if you are more flexible. I'm more flexible. It's harder for me to gain strength. It's something that I've dealt with. It's something that I, I still do strength training. It's fine. I just move a little bit slower than others. It's all right. I still get stronger. I still get better. Same thing if you're postmenopausal. It's going to take a little bit more for you to gain some strength. You're a little older. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. It doesn't mean it's, that you can't get better. You can. You can get so much better. Does everybody understand what the biggest mistake is? Is that you're, mo you're not stabilizing your back. You're not stabilizing your spine when you're doing your core exercises. So then that puts more stress on your back, puts more stress on your hip flexors and other areas your neck too and so then you actually are teaching those compensating patterns making your back hurt worse and not actually strengthening your core it can make you hurt it can it doesn't strengthen things to make you feel better and you really need to focus in and do an easier exercise to go back and revisit do i actually know how to turn my core on do i know what that means and thinking about those factors before you start pushing into so many different exercises. Um, Karen asked if there's a good strength program for postmenopause. So I have the Ride Life team, and then I have a deal on the Core Crushers going on this week. The Ride Life team is what I call, it's, it builds you in. So a lot of times they talk about resistance training, lift heavy shit for postmenopausal, for ladies that need to build more bone mass that you need more, more muscle strength. Well, to me, to get to that point where you're able to lift heavier things, you have to start at a different point. You start where you're building your base. You start where you're understanding actually how to use your core. You start where you're actually knowing how to use your glutes because I can't add load if my base form is off. And so that's a lot of what I go through in the team. It's my exercise videos are not like typical exercise videos. I do not count your reps for you. You can do that yourself, you're a grown ass lady. I go through and make sure that you are understanding the exercise, that you are knowing what you're supposed to be using in that exercise and how to correct from it. I don't count your reps. It's not me just doing an exercise class in front of you. It's me going over the form of it. And so understanding that, understanding how to actually use some of your muscles and strengthening up to then where you can start adding more load to it. And believe me, the team has six different levels in each upper body, lower body core imbalance, and they will make you work. <laughs> Definitely. The Core Crushers is a simplified version of that that's focused in towards your core. It's focused in, it has a pelvic floor section, and so it's your base of the base. Core Crushers is the best place to start, even before the team, but the team is also a great place to start. It gets in all the things. Understanding your body, understanding how to move it, needing to do that first, to me is paramount before you start doing heavy resistance load training. Like, so many things. The, and as Shay said, the, the podcast hit play not pause. There's also a Facebook group that's in for that too. They have so much good information in that group. Stacy Sims runs it along with a couple other gals. Uh, they have some great stuff in there. And y'all, I hope that this resonated with you. I hope that this will change how you are strength training with your core. 
and how you are using it, how you are thinking about your exercises and your workouts. And that you're not just trying to do the next fancy exercise because it looked cool on Instagram. Because honestly, things don't need to look fancy. They just need to serve a purpose. They just need to be useful and really target the areas that we want it to target. I don't need to do all these other crazy stuff. All right, y'all, have a fantastic night, and I hope this was super helpful and resonating with you. Bye, y'all.